Hello, in this video we are going to derive compensated demand functions, sometimes known as Hicksian demand functions. We'll also derive the regular demand functions or uncompensated demand functions. So we're going to start with the setup. We have a utility function, Cobb-Douglas utility function. We have a consumer's budget constraint, M is income, price of good X, price of good Y. Um, I already took the partial derivatives to give us the marginal utility of good X and the marginal utility of good Y. So to derive the compensated demand functions, we're going to start with the utility maximizing condition, where the marginal utility of good X must divided by the price of good X must equal the marginal utility of good Y divided by the price of good Y. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute um, the marginal utility of good X and marginal utility of good Y into this expression. And we get this result. Uh, what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to solve it for Y. So solving for Y we're left with this and then I'm also going to solve this for X to get this result. Alright, so now to get the compensated demand functions we're going to take this right here and we're going to plug it into the utility function. So we're going to plug this into the utility function U. So here's our utility function, which equals x, y. So where we see a y, we're going to plug in this price ratio times x. I'm going to simplify this. And then we're going to solve this for x. And we're going to put a little c here, subscript c. That is our compensated demand function for good x. Okay, going back to the top, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to plug this result back into our utility function. So where we see an X, we're going to plug in the price of good Y divided by the price of good X times good Y, and then that's all times good Y again. So utility equals the following solve for y okay taking the square root of both sides we will be left with our compensated demand function for good y okay so that's how you solve compensated demand functions uh, let me do a few more things here. Let's get our regular uncompensated demand functions. So to get our regular uncompensated demand functions, let me take this expression over here and let me rewrite the other expression this time when we solve it for x. Okay. So we're going to get the regular uncompensated demand functions. We're going to take this and we're going to plug it into the budget constraint, BC. And we're going to do the same thing with this. So plugging this equation in the budget constraint. And the budget constraint is up here again. So just plugging in for Y the price of good X divided by the price of good Y times y. Uh, this will simplify down to 
following result. Okay, the piece of what uh, the oh, that's an X there. Sorry. So the price of Y terms cancel there, and we're left with this solving for X. We have our regular uncompensated demand or Marshallian demand for good X. We do the same thing over here. Making the substitution of this expression into the budget constraint. we have our uncompensated demand for good Y. Okay. Let me show you some other things that we can do with the compensated and uncompensated demand functions. Let me get a clean sheet. Let's let um, income equal $16 let's let the price of good X equal one dollar and the price of good Y equal one dollar let's go ahead and plug these results into our uncompensated demand functions and I'll rewrite those so sixteen two times the price of good X means the consumer would buy eight units of good X and let's go ahead and do the same thing for good Y. Plugging the income and price information into the uncompensated demand for good Y. The consumer also chooses to buy eight units of good Y. In terms of utility, since our utility function is X times Y, Consumers getting 64 units of utility, 64 units of satisfaction. Now let's all plug the same information into our uncompensated or into our compensated demand functions, which we solved and found that they look something like this. Okay, so plugging this information into our uncompensated demand. this equals 8 for good X so the consumers uncompensated our compensated demand for good X uh, is going to be 8 at these values and we do this for good Y oops now oh, I already made the substitution in for you uh, substituting ones into uh, the price of good X and price of good Y this will also equal 8. Okay now the next thing we can do is let the price of good X increase to four dollars holding the price of good Y at one dollar. Let's calculate our uncompensated demands So M is uh, 16 uh, still, okay, um, and then it's going to be 2 times the price of good X. This is 2. So I'm just evaluating uh, the uncompensated demand as M divided by 2 times the price of good X. We do the same thing for good Y. And the consumer would choose to purchase eight units of good Y. Uh, the utility in this case with the rise in the price of good X is going to fall to 16 now. Now let's look at the uncompensated demands.
So with the uncompensated demand, we're going to hold the utility constant uh, at 64. And we're just going to evaluate uh, the demand function at the new price ratio. And we get 4. 8 divided by 2. And so the compensated demand for good Y similar idea. We're going to hold the utility constant at 64, plugging in the new price ratio. Uh, we get 16, 2 times 8. Okay, let me bring all this together now in a diagram. Okay, so we've got a, a few things going on here. Uh, we started at point A. At point A, price of good X was one dollar, price of good Y was one dollar, consumer had sixteen dollars of income. We found the uncompensated demand for good X and good Y, eight and eight, and the compensated demand for good X and good Y. So point A is our original point of utility maximization. What we did then was we increased the price of good X, holding the price of good Y constant, and we found the uncompensated, or we found the compensated demand, where the consumer purchased four units of good X and eight units of good Y. That's going to be point B up here. So all we're doing is we're rotating the budget constraint, the budget line, to reflect this new price ratio holding utility constant. In fact, this movement from A to B is what is known as a substitution effect. Okay? This movement from A to B is known as a substitution effect, and we can solve for that by looking at the difference between the uncompensated and compensated demand functions. Okay, so the next thing we did was, okay, let the price of good X again equal four dollars, keeping the price of good Y constant at one evaluating the uncompensated demand functions, the consumer would now be maximizing utility at point C, giving that consumer only 16 units of satisfaction. Well, this movement from B to C can be thought of as the, as the income effect of the price change. Okay, So this is going to be the effect on the quantity purchased from a, decreased, from a decrease in income holding the price ratio unchanged. So that's uh, what's nice about having a good grasp on the difference between compensated and uncompensated demand functions. Okay, um, I hope you found this video helpful.